Hey guys, Newbie here, and today I wanted to show you how to calibrate the GamePro. So you can see I've got my GamePro plugged into my computer. Uh, I haven't put my 3DS into the GamePro yet. Uh, we'll do that shortly, but first we need to work on the uh, software side of things. So if we just jump over onto my laptop. Okay, so this is the Arduino IDE with the basic GamePro sketch. Uh, now you should have already uploaded this um, to move all the servo motors to 90 degrees in order to put the actuators on um, and just a heads up if you haven't uploaded this yet and you're trying to and having issues um, you need to make sure that you go to tools and the board that needs to be selected is the Arduino Nano and you also need to make sure you're on the correct COM port and then you can hit upload. Now I've already done that um, but what I'm going to do um, now is go down here where we've got this variable SR off so that's basically the off position for the soft reset rod um, and I'm actually going to move that to 80 and that will just lift that up a little bit further so it's easier to put the uh, GamePro unit in uh, when we insert it and then what we're going to do is we're going to change all these other variables um, control the servo motor positions to push the buttons um, so we're going to go through and update all of those so we're getting correct interaction with the buttons Okay, so I'm just going to upload this now, and what you should see is as it uploads, it should move the soft reset rod up slightly. There you go, so it's moved it up uh, just out of the way slightly further so that it doesn't catch on the 3DS when we move it into place. Now, if we just have a look at uh, these actuators. Um, the one that presses up and down is on a slight bit of an angle at the moment, even though it's set to the 90 degrees. And that's because I've found uh, when you actually put them on, even if you've got the servo motor in the 90 degree position, because of the um, little teeth on the cogs, it's not always possible to get it um, so it's exactly straight. So what we need to do is we actually need to move that into position um, first so it's sitting a little bit straighter so that we can then slide the uh, 3DS into place. So that's the actuator that pushes the up and down buttons and it needs to move a little bit further towards the down button in order for it to be sitting flat. So if we have a look in our code and we've got these set of variables um, that control the up and down buttons and we can see we've got um, this up max value is basically uh, where it turns to to press up down max is where it turns to to press down, these are all in degrees by the way, 80 degrees, not 100 degrees and 90 degrees is where it's sitting at the moment. So because we need to move it a little bit further towards the down button, uh, we need to actually increase this value slightly. So I'm just going to move this to say 93 uh, degrees and then I'm going to upload this code. And hopefully that will move it into a slightly better position. Yep, there it goes. And sometimes, um, sometimes they'll move to a little bit of an odd place as the code is being uploaded, but then it will correct itself into the right place. Okay, so with that being um, sitting a little bit flatter, now if, if you have to do the same for um, any of the others, it's the, the same procedure, but you'll just be changing um, the appropriate variables. So if it's, the, if it's the one that presses A and Y, you'll be changing these variables and so on. Alright, so with that done, we're ready to uh, put the uh, 3DS into place now. Alright, so this should just slide straight into place. Like so. Um, and because we are setting this up um, and testing all the buttons, what I'm actually going to do is there's these uh, screen holders and I'm actually going to insert them um, with the side that, well it's basically the flat side on this version, but the bit that sticks out the most, it doesn't have the cutout for the L and R buttons. So I'm going to insert them so that they are holding down um, L and R.
All right, so we're ready to start calibrating this now. Okay, so we're going to use this really uh, useful feature here, the serial monitor button in the Arduino, and that's basically going to allow us to um, send signals direct to the GamePro. So we'll open this up, and what we can do here is we can enter in certain characters, and that will tell the GamePro to um, push buttons depending on what character we enter. So for example, the number four, if I enter that, that's going to try and tell it to hold the left arrow down. Whereas if I enter, say, the number six, that's going to uh, tell it to try and hold the uh, right arrow down. So we'll just enter four here and we'll see how it responds. Okay, so we can see it moved the servo to the left, but it wasn't able to move the character, so it's not interacting properly. And if we press the number six, okay, so that is enough for it to move to the right. By the way, that zero button, if you if you uh, see the character zero, that basically returns all servo motors to the default position. Okay, so we can close that now. Um, and actually, you'll just notice there, sometimes when you open and close that serial port, it seems to interact with the um, servos, and it will briefly cause um, one or two of them to move to an unusual position before they reset to the default. Don't worry too much about that. So just looking at these values, um, so we're setting the variables for the left and, left and right. Um, the right button seemed to be working okay, which means this, this value right max was okay. Whereas this one here, uh, the left max, um, that wasn't enough to press the button. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to decrease this 80 down to 75. And that will turn it slightly further and hopefully interact with the button. So we'll make that change, upload the code. And when that's uploaded, there we'll open the serial monitor again and we'll try number four again, see if it's enough to make it move left, which it's still not. Okay, so we'll close that and we'll try moving this now to 70 and we'll upload. Okay, so once that's uploaded, open the serial monitor again. And now let's try moving left. Okay, this time it is enough to move it. So it's just a case of um, steadily decreasing that. It doesn't have to be in increments of five. It can be whatever you need to. Um, but smaller increments are probably better because you don't really want it going too far. Um, but now we seem to have uh, left and right working as they should. Okay, if you do happen to make it go too far, so um, we'll just make it, let's say we went down to, say, 60. We'll upload that. Okay, so now if we press this, you'll hear the servo motor makes that sort of noise because it's uh, reaching its stall torque. Um, which is not really great for the motor. So if that happens, what it means is you need to back that number off a little bit. So we already know 70 was okay, so we'll, um, we'll stick to that. And uh, basically what that means now is um, this central point of 90, that's 20 away from, 20 degrees away from pressing left, but only 10 degrees away from pressing the right button. Um, so it can be a good idea just to change this number so it's it's the middle of uh, the left and right buttons which in this case would be 85 um, if you're unsure how to find that just add these two numbers together and then divide by two okay so that's the left and right buttons done now what we're going to do is move on to the up and down buttons here so we can do the same thing open the serial monitor uh, now here I'm going to use uh, 8 as um, for the press and hold up and two is for the press and hold down so we'll just try entering those and see how it responds okay so if I press up I've just gone around that corner we'll try that again so that seems to be working pressing up if we try pressing down that's not working so same thing um, if we go down here to our down value down max which was a hundred we need to increase that slightly so we need to go, say, to we'll try 105. Wait for that to upload. 
Okay, and open the serial monitor and let's see if that's enough. No, it's still not enough, so we'll decrease that further. Sorry, increase to 110. Alright, and let's give that a go. No. So we'll try 115. Yep, and that is enough. Okay, um, and so again we can add these two together, what's that, 195, divide it by 2, that's about, say 97 we'll call it. Sorry, no, uh, yeah that's about right. Um, okay, so uh, that should be the up, down and left, right buttons all calibrated. Um, so I mentioned that you can use those numbers to press and hold up or press and hold right or whatever uh, button you want to press but what happens if you want to just say tap left or tap right um, so you actually use for up use the letter E uh, for down the letter D left is S and right is F so if we just try each of those so E actually it's already facing up we'll try we'll start with D for down E for up uh, S for left and F Right, there we go. Yep, so they're all working fine. And now we need to move on to uh, the A, B, X, and Y buttons. All right, so it's the same sort of idea for uh, these ones as well. I'm actually going to start with the B and X buttons. Uh, so we'll just open the serial monitor and let's try pressing X. Okay, so that's not quite doing, doing the trick there. So we'll increase that value slightly. Uh, we're over here, X max. So we'll move that up to say 105 for starters. And we'll give that a try. All right. By the way, I'm just using X obviously for the X button, but I can see that's still not quite uh, pressing that properly. So we'll try going to 110. All right, that's uploaded, and there we go. So we can see that uh, that's correctly opening the bottom screen menu, so the X button is working fine. And let's just try, while we've got that menu open, we'll try the B button, and that is not doing the trick. Okay, so we need to uh, decrease that value as well. So this B max value needs to decrease, so we'll try moving that down to 75. Load that and open the serial monitor. Okay, and we'll try B again and still not quite doing it. So we'll go a little bit further. So we'll try going down to 70. Upload that. Open the serial monitor monitor and try B again and there we go so now we've got X oh, so we'll notice that is B is sometimes pressing it but sometimes not so what, we'll, what we might do is we'll move that just a little bit further um, so we'll say 68 because you want to get it so every time that signal is sent it actually presses the button alright let's try that now Okay, so X is actually having the same problem as well. Alright, so we need to move X slightly too. So, X can go to 112. Alright. Okay, so that's working a bit more reliably there. And we'll try the B. Yep, X and B seems to be working fine. 
Okay. Um, yeah, again, you can uh, spend a little bit more time on this sort of tutoring around, making sure you're getting the correct interaction that you want. Um, you just want to make sure, and actually for these ones that are just pressing the button, it's it's not so bad to go um, a little bit on the high side because it just taps the button anyway and then moves back. Um, but for the ones that are holding down the button, you don't want it. Uh, you don't want the servo motor making that noise where it uh, basically reaches its stall torque. Okay, so that's uh, B and X done. So now let's have a look at uh, the Y and A values. Um, so actually, we'll just open the serial monitor and we'll check um, if the A button is working as it is. Yep, and it does seem to be. Okay, so it just missed one there, so it probably needs to go a little bit further that way. So we'll increase that uh, maybe just to 103. Alright, and let's have a look. Yep, that seems to be working fine. Okay, and let's try the Y button. Okay, that doesn't seem to be working. So we'll, in, oh, sorry, decrease that one slightly. So we'll go to 75. And let's have a look. And I might just actually make sure. Okay, and we're back. And uh, I realized that I didn't actually have a, uh, any registered items at all. So I was pressing Y and it uh, wasn't coming up with anything. So um, I've registered the dowsing machine now. And you can see when I press Y, that is indeed doing what it should be doing. So that value of 75 has definitely done the trick. Okay, so uh, everything should be basically ready to go now with all those buttons. So we should be able to sort of run around freely, make sure all the buttons are working properly, which they seem to be. Try talking to this lady. Yep, okay, so everything seems to be working fine. The only thing left to do is the soft reset button. Okay, so uh, the variables for soft resetting are actually down here. Um, and you can see the soft reset off position is actually set to 80. We changed that right back at the start of the video. Um, and this SR max, that's the value um, to actually press the um, start select buttons. So what we'll do is we'll just give this a try. So we'll open up the serial monitor. Uh, now the character that needs to be sent through for soft reset is a capital S. So we'll put in a capital S and press enter. And that did uh, indeed do the soft reset. So just remember I've got the inserts at the back holding down the L and R buttons as well. So what I'll just do is uh, run through this menu quickly and we'll just try that one more time. Um, to make sure that is working as it should be. So I'm just pressing the A button at the moment. Okay, so um, we'll try the capital S again. And we'll hit enter. Yep, and that is doing the trick. Okay, so if that um, wasn't doing the trick, what we can do is come down to this SR max and increase that 90 value say to 95 or something like that um, just so it presses that button a little bit further but otherwise everything seems to be working as it should um, so that's the game pro uh, calibrated and now we're ready to start trying to run some programs with it